What are the SDGs? In 2015, world leaders of 193 member states of the United Nations agreed to 17 global goals. Officially known as the Sustainable Development Goals and pronounced SDGs. These goals were carefully identified as having the potential to change the world by 2030 through poverty eradication, fighting inequality and addressing the urgency of climate change. The 17 goals constitute of 169 targets and 230 indicators. The global goals are ambitious but achievable. It integrates all three aspects of sustainable development and they are social, economic and environmental. Goal 3. Good health and hunger. Goal 3's target is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. There are 13 targets in Goal 3. The target for 2030 focuses on reducing and eliminating global maternal and child mortality, preventable deaths of newborns and children under 5 years of age, diseases such as AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, neglected tropical disease, waterborne diseases, road traffic accidents, access to sexual and reproductive health services. Despite significant progress in maternal health, in 2017, nearly 300,000 women died from complications relating to pregnancy and childbirth. Over 90% of them lived in low and middle income countries. For every woman who died, countless others suffered acute and even lifelong consequences of maternal ill health. Remarkable progress has been made in child survival worldwide. And millions of children under five years of age are more likely to survive today than in 2000. The decrease in HIV incidence is falling short of the target, despite steady progress in Sub-Saharan Africa. The incidence of HIV among adults 15 to 49 years of age in Sub-Saharan Africa declined by around 37% from 2010 to 2017. After more than a decade of steady gains against malaria, progress has stalled. Sub-Saharan Africa continues to carry the heaviest burden, accounting for more than 90% of global malaria cases, and the toll is rising. COVID-19 pandemic has interrupted childhood immunization programs in around 70 countries. Illnesses and deaths from communicable diseases will spike. The pandemic in Africa is being tackled on fragile health system grounds with poor governance, underfunding, shortage of health workforce and medical supplies, inadequate health infrastructure, and weak service delivery. Future landscape, what is the way forward? Before COVID-19, progress in many health areas like tuberculosis, child health, maternal health, HIV and immunization continued, but needed to be fast-tracked. With COVID-19, it is estimated that healthcare disruptions could reverse decades of improvements. Achieving SDG 3 means, but not limited to ending AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, neglected tropical diseases, and protecting the world from pandemic threats. It means an end to child and mother deaths and ensuring full access to sexual and reproductive health care for women. SDG 3 also envisages the achievement of ambitious commitments to achieve universal health coverage, provide access to safe and affordable medicines and vaccines for all, and to strengthen health systems. For this to happen, the challenges with funding for health services shortage of health personnel, weak or non-existent, among others, needs to be consistently addressed. UNC's faculty and research engaging with this goal. Dr. Royce Boyce is an assistant professor at UNC Chapel Hill's School of Medicine with the Division of Infectious Diseases. Dr. Boyce's research 
focuses on the epidemiology of malaria and vector-borne diseases in East Africa, particularly in rural and underserved communities. Currently, Dr. Boyce has two areas of active investigation. The first is an evaluation of multiple antigen rapid diagnostic tests called RDT to provide a semi-quantitative estimate of parasite density and risk of severe malaria in order to guide management strategies at remote health facilities. The second area of investigation is the use of Geographic Information Systems, GIS, to describe the spatial epidemiology of malaria and eventually identify and target hotspots via community-based interventions. Such work holds the potential to reduce local malaria transmission in a sustainable, cost-effective manner while maximizing existing public health infrastructure such as community health workers. Boys will utilize geographic profiling in his National Institute of Health's Malaria Research Funded Projects to map malaria cases in Western Uganda. Dr. Boyce is also working on projects to determine the efficacy of paid malaria testing and was recently awarded a Grand Challenges Exploration Grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to study methods for increasing childhood immunizations in Uganda. In conclusion, the pandemic has exposed fundamental weaknesses in our global health system and exposed the widening SDG needs gap. It has shown how the prevalence of poverty, weak health systems, subpar education, and a lack of global cooperation can exacerbate a health crisis. In returning to normalcy, the lessons gained from the pandemic must not be lost. Governments should focus on the key factors that contribute to the spread of epidemics and worsen public health risks. Governments should fund and offer universal basic health coverage for all its citizens and strengthen its health institutions and personnel. For the goals to be met, everyone needs to do their part. Academic and research institutions, governments, the private sector, civil society, bilateral and multilateral institutions, the development community, and the general public. To learn more about the SDGs in Africa, please visit www.sdgcafrica.org.